People don't understand, like I mentioned, when you arouse yourself with these things, you're opening yourself up to a whole nother world that people don't understand. And as you mentioned, the people, the musicians playing with the Ouija board, people don't know what these people are doing behind the scenes. There's a reason these, these, uh, these women and these people are screaming in the crowd for them. They're utilizing, many people are utilizing the assistance of the jinn to assist them in their performances and everything. People don't realize these things. This is a whole nother reality, especially many of the Muslims are very ignorant towards this fact. They don't understand that this is a whole nother element. It's just not something that's, you know, friendly and things like this. No. You are inviting these things into your home on a deeper level. Some scholars refer to music, they refer to it as the Quran of Shaitan. Satan's Quran. And it goes into the heart. And it occupies the heart. When it occupies the heart, there's no room for the Quran of Allah. That's the reality. It squeezes it out. When I was a non-Muslim, you yeah, I used to play various instruments. I can tell you that it literally felt like I was under possession. I would do things that I was not able to do. I would play things that I was not able to play normally. Music is very, very dangerous. And a lot of people don't know what they're doing with the music. And if you don't believe this, all you have to do is look at some documentary footage of what was called Beatlemania in the West and how mad people went over new sounds of music that were being popularized and promoted over the airways and rock and roll had a massive impact on people and as it got darker and darker and you went into these heavy metal and all these other types of uh, you you get some really really uh, serious problems at these concerts where people literally will go mad I mean obviously there's drug involvement and this is another reason because you'll find many of the hadith that talk about the prohibition of music also have drugs mentioned in the same hadith there's so much corruption in this music industry and there's so many things that happen behind the scenes that is actually is very wild when it actually comes to light. And and this is why you have people like Ibn Qayyim and Josiah, one of the scholars of the past, he said that music is the Quran of the devil. And this is why you see that most of the people that come from the music industry, in fact, they actually do some of the worst sins and they actually become some of the worst people that ever walked the face of this earth from starting off with good manners but once they enter into the music industry i seen it personally and witnessed it they always turn into another person that they didn't even expect people like jimmy hendrix and these he was not able to play without being under a substance being high without being high so we know even from a scholarly point of view what do the scholars mention about people that get high and things like this you make yourself open to what the chin Every musician that is on the highest level, think about it. Many of them are doing drugs and alcohol to get them to that level. You can't escape it. You, can, you might as well, if you don't want to be involved with drugs and alcohol or listening to someone that is involved in those things, you might as well take all, all of your CDs and everything and just throw it out. Because this is what the people that you're listening to, this is what they're involved in, many of them. Mm -hmm. Getting high, alcohol, and as you mentioned, it's not clearly clarifies and make clear it makes clear the position on those things so what state is that person in when they were singing that song what state was the soul in because you, you may start to feel the way that person was feeling you understand this is a serious thing and yes i know some people personally i won't mention a name and we ask a lot of guidance to islam it's a very very famous rap group that sold maybe 30 40 million records worldwide they used to actually be engagement and talking to devils, jinns, and worshiping the shaitan. And they told me stories how they used to be aided by the shayatin. And it was aided by the jinns and aided by the devils. So you have this in the music industry. You have verses where Snoop Dogg, for example, may Allah guide him to Islam. He had a song where he actually was having a conversation with the devil. And in the middle of this song, he actually said that he sold his soul to the devil. So you have a corruption that happens in the music industry that's it's very different than any other entertainment. Some of you may know I used to be the lead guitarist in a rock group. It's not a part of my bio. But that was the reality. 
When I lived here in Malaysia, I was lead guitarist. Alhamdulillah, I found Islam. My bass player also found Islam, and the drummer also found Islam later. Alhamdulillah. None of us played music after that. But the point is that the allure and the power of music, I know it. And it became so obvious to me when after accepting Islam, and I was still playing in nightclubs, I accepted Islam and then I divorced myself from the culture of the other members of the group in which I played. So I didn't participate with them in the intoxicants and things that people were doing and taking. So in the nightclubs, I used to be the only sober one. I'm there playing away and people are dancing and, and you know, I just looked at this and I could see that this was so devilish. You know, when Allah speaks about, you know, how shaitan prods the people you know, that's exactly what was going on. You know, I could see it. It was clear. Clear. This power that music has over people, where people end up loving it, loving it more than they love the Quran. Uh, if you take a look at music and I know there are very few scholars you know of late who are saying no there's nothing wrong and so on but even those and I want to clarify something to start with the truth is even if we look at some of the scholars who might have said that okay you know what uh, music there is certain uh, you know it's permissible they are not talking about the beat of today Today's beat is definitely excluded. There is no scholar on earth, Muslim scholar, that allows you to listen to Beyonce and Madonna and Michael Jackson and those. That is completely out because number one, it's dirty, it's filthy. The lyrics are horrible, terrible. They encourage you to move your body and to shake your thing, as they say. May Allah forgive us, really. They move, you move your body, you are sexually hyped up. It moves you to a point and a peak where the dirtiness of this music industry has got to such a degree that the Christians and the Jews who are following are also saying it's prohibited, not just the Muslims. I think nowadays music is probably one of the easiest means to lose your moral sense. It is music is audio pornography today. That's what it is. It's explicit. It's shameless, it's vulgar, it takes your sense of humanity away from you, it makes you look at women as objects, worse than objects, worse than animals. Just ask, and these people are talking about women like they're talking about, you know, uh, an animal, really. It, it, it objectifies women, and especially I've noticed a lot of the brothers that I know of Muslims that are really into the hip hop scene, and they're kind of doing the hiv of the, the song. Right? They're memorizing the song and they're really good at reciting it with perfect tajweed too, right? And so they, they do that and it's just horrible language, horrible, horrific, horrific language. So it's a dirty industry. Ask those who are in it. It's filthy. When you hear about music, you hear about how to attract the opposite sex and it's all about love and all about, you know, your emotions. And so at home, you're not happy when you go to work, you see someone you're working with and you're busy thinking, oh, the music fits exactly here and so on. Things are happening. People are tampering with our minds. Whereas we have the melody of the Quran, the melodious revelation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has has given us something great and grand we should not substitute the Quran with that if a person finds listening to the Quran annoying after they've been listening to hip-hop and this and that for a long time and as soon as somebody puts the Quran in the car you know what to say oh man turn that off man I, I, I don't want to I just want to talk and they immediately they, they get a little annoyed when they hear the Quran that actually means the shayateen have taken over and they're constantly making waswas out of this person because what do the shayateen hate the most they hate the Quran. They hate the word of Allah. They, they flee. It hurts them. So you know what they do? They, because this person has let the shayateen, the devils into his heart, they start pinching at his heart when he hears Quran. And he says, I don't want to hear this. Right? It's like surgery. It's like pulling a tooth for this person. 
when you try to give this person a reminder from Allah's word, they get annoyed by it, like agitated, like an allergic reaction. Why? Because they've let the shayateen in. To let them out, the first thing you gotta do is stop supplying them with fuel. This is fuel.